Hi, Megan King here, and I want to share with you a little trick I picked up uh, in a self-study for the month of January on how to get your mojo back. So there are a few things I did in January that really helped me because I think the start of a new year always is a good time to get going on uh, just re-energizing yourself, revamping yourself, um, getting back to your goals. Whether that, whether you're a big New Year's resolution person or not, it's also just a matter of uh, sitting back and saying, you know what? I've got this. I've got this year. We are gonna go. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, that's my kitty. That's Smokey. Anywho, I did three things in January to help kick me into healthier habits because I have to admit, November and December were rough for me. Um, besides just the holiday festivities with all the unhealthy sweets and eating, um, I also just, my energy was down. I was kind of feeling down. I hadn't reached some business goals that I had hoped to. I just kind of got stuck in a few things here and there. And it showed in um, my wellness and health because I also cut back on exercise. And fitness and exercise for me is huge because I just... I love it. It makes me feel amazing. Uh, running is part of my meditation, as so is yoga. And I just cut those out in sort of that self-manipulating kind of way of when you sit there and you're like, oh, I know I should do this and I'd feel so much better, but instead I'm going to have this cheesecake. That was me uh, for a lot of those months. I was just... Um, you know, it was just rough, and so I really needed something to kick myself back into gear and energize myself, and there's three main things I did to do that. First one was I let go. Instead of trying to just hit my head on the wall and do all I can and just get more frustrated and more annoyed in everything... I let go and had a nice vacation season. I had a 10-day trip planned to visit my in-laws in England for Christmas, and I didn't do work. I didn't do all my little tasks, all these things that I hadn't finished for the year. I actually just stepped back and relaxed. And then, in January... I declared a few things to also kick myself into gear uh, because after I had that relaxed rejuvenation time, I was ready to go, um, but I needed to just revamp a little bit more with my habits, um, productivity, and feeling great every day, and getting back out there, um, doing more activities that made me feel better so that in return, I did better work. I showed up happier. So I gave up sugar, I gave up alcohol, and I set off on a 14-day yoga challenge. So doing these um, were just really nice. They had, you know, there was a set goal, a set time. It was a stretch for me. Um, but I did them all and it kind of just reminded me that you can make commitments like these and there's a ripple effect in doing that when you make a choice to change your habits, to commit to something. So committing to the no sugar was something I'd thought of doing for ages and I never made it past four days without having sugar. I'm such a sweet tooth. I love it. It's a weakness of mine. So I declared that I would do the 30 days with it. And, uh, and then I realized uh, just in making this commitment, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be because I wasn't focusing on all that I couldn't have. I was just focusing on what I could have and what I needed to make to eat 
because if you start reading labels, you'll see that sugar is in everything. So it does help to plan ahead to have a strong shopping list, a fully stocked fridge of what you are able to eat. But in doing so, you end up eating a lot of quality real foods and it helps a lot if you cook and enjoy that as well. So uh, the other part, the yoga challenge, that was awesome. It was just one of those, I love yoga, I know I feel amazing when I do it, but I needed something to get my booty in gear and not just do one yoga session, but keep it going. So taking on a 14 day yoga challenge was awesome. And it was so simple too. This was an online challenge that I had found with my favorite online yoga site, doyogawithme.com. And they had put together a 14 day challenge, which is still on the website. So I encourage you to go if you like yoga. And, uh, you know, I didn't do it 14 days in a row, but I did the two weeks within three weeks. And for me, that was, that was huge. That was much better than my December doing yoga, maybe once a week, if that. So it just helped so much. I felt amazing. I improved every day because I was doing it so frequently. I could feel the difference in my strength and my flexibility. And, uh, you know, I just, had a ripple effect in other things as well. So with me declaring all of this, you know, shift in eating better, in exercising more, um, and allowing myself to take that break beforehand, um, these were all just, you know, great messages to just kind of get me in gear. And with that, you know, just my energy improved, I lost weight, so I could fit into my yellow pants again, because that happened at the end of last year. So, <laughs> so my goal of cutting out sugar did, you know, help that as well. And things in business are going really, really well. I've just gotten a few new clients. I have some great partnerships going, some new budding events happening, a workshop on the way, and it's all it's all cool. It's awesome. I'm feeling great about 2016. And I think that uh, shift for me just to declare a few things and get back into healthy habits made all the difference. So if you need a little mojo oomph, I encourage you to do a similar thing. Set some goals, make them time specific and manageable, but stretch yourself. Do something that's not necessarily easy for you, like yoga every day or cutting out something unhealthy that you eat frequently. So hope that helps and have a fabulous, fabulous day. Talk to you later.